It's a fact men today are becoming more depressed, lethargic, and weak. And Dr. Orris is a man who's done extensive research and interviews on the matter, and we get to interview him today. But don't mistake his wisdom for medical advice. Definitely consult your own physician for your own medical needs. Without further ado, here's Dr. Orist. You've spoken to a lot of experts on on various subjects when it comes to men's health and and lifestyle. Why is it doctors don't understand testosterone like some other like the experts do? Well, because they 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 were, they were, they were trained in, in medical school. Two, they're being taught to uh, uh, do what we call, what I call defensive medicine. You know, treat in the numbers, fall into that range. And then uh, the last thing is that a lot of practices now are owned by private equity groups. Okay, so it's not mm-hmm. where the, it's not where the doctors own the practice, and so th- that yeah. doctor is on a schedule and a quota system. So many X yeah. mile diagnostic codes, which is how they get billed, prescriptions mm-hmm. that they're, are now electronically. You don't even have to write them anymore. You just check them off, on a, and they automatically sent off. And and you'll you'll yeah. you find that, that that in a lot of these clinics, a typical visit with a physician, even the first visit, is about fifteen minutes. But the functional medicine doctors don't take they they're not in the insurance system, and that's why when you go see one, more likely than not, you're going to spend an hour with them on your first initial visit, maybe even longer. Mm. And plan on paying six hundred bucks. Yeah, three hundred six hundred somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, are there any, so you said that there are a lot of things that block that, that affect basically your hormones and your diet that affect your yeah. testosterone um, and are there specific just, foods. Uh, not a, not, not that I'm aware of in terms of specific foods, but I think that there's some things that, you know, like I said, the uh, endocrine disrupting compounds, the, the plastics, the GMOs, the fertilizers, uh, all those things that affect, affect them. You know the the other thing that is affecting, and most again, this is just another thing that's that's not widely known, but it's not, and this is not the uh, tinfoil hat stuff because it was in the journal in the, in the annals of physiology, which is a highly refereed uh, 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 publication. I think there's an article, excuse me, that that talks about sperm counts, and sperm counts have mm-hmm. dropped by fifty percent in the last thirty years. Interesting. Um, and the uh, this is a, a study that was, came out of Hebrew University and co-authored by uh, epidemiologists at uh, NYU and uh, other places. You know, very very high level uh, researchers. And their, their comment is that the slope of that decrease is is not abating. It's continuing to drop and drop more, and that most men will be infertile in the world in 2050. And do you think pornography has something to do with that? Uh, no, I think. Well, the 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 the, the, path, the pathogenesis of that is the uh, that's a fancy word. I haven't used that word in ages. Um, is uh, <laughs> is in utero, uh, testosterone. The uh, testicles aren't dropping at the right time. Hence, they're mm. they're not devel- as developed as they should be. Hence, the low uh, sperm production. Hence, the low testosterone production. That's wild. So, you know, so when Elon Musk says uh, depopulation is going to be an issue, he's absolutely correct. We don't worry about overpopulation. Yeah. That's not going to be the problem. Uh, there are most many countries in the civilized world, in the industrial world, are not replacing their population. Yeah. We well, South Korea. What is it? Four grandchildren for one hundred people. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, same as Japan. Absolutely crazy. Uh, same, I, I believe, in Italy and France. Uh, all those places, and the United States is. I, I'm not sure. I keep on hearing different statistics, and the only reason the United States is kind of replacing is that we have such a high a number of Hispanics that tend to have larger families. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. but it's 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 a issue. Uh, it's all sorts of ramifications in terms of uh, not just population, but the uh, uh, future tax base. Who's going to take care of people? You know, you know, uh, who's going mm-hmm. to who's going to support all the institutions? Blah, blah, Social blah, blah, blah. security is not looking too great right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, they'll bail. <laughs> they'll bail it out. I, I, I I'm sh- sure they'll bail it out somehow. It'll, it'll be some yeah. sort of weird thing. They'll, they'll do probably a hybrid system, I think, or something. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an expert in that field. You're attributing a lot of your youth and how you feel to testosterone. Actually, yeah, that's true. Yeah. What, what drove you to explore testosterone as a solution? I have friends that were doing it 30 years ago. And yeah. they, said, they said, you should try it. And I tried it. I liked it. Uh, it was a time when I wasn't really, I wasn't particularly big. Uh, now I'm big. I've been told I'm imposing, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm big now. And it's, it's not, uh, you know, we have, a, I, we have a lot of fat genes in my family. So that, that's part of it. But I, I'm also, I'm very muscular. I mean, you, you can tell that I work out. What were you feeling prior to taking testosterone that made you feel that you needed to? No, I, you know, it's so, it's so long ago, Cole. I, I don't really, really remember other than the fact that, uh, I knew that I did not have the body I wanted and it almost immediately made me feel better, improve my attitude. So uh, it, it was just your attitude, yeah, energy. Yeah. And attitude, energy. Uh, and so I, I liked it. And so, and, and then all of a sudden I started seeing myself get, you know, I, I used to think that lifting 60 pound dumbbells was a big deal. Uh, and I, now that, that's kind of like my, my warm up routine. That's so awesome. How do you feel age wise? You're in your seventies, but how do you feel? I feel like I'm in my forties. That's incredible. I do. I, I feel like and, I'm in the forties mentally and not necessarily physically because uh, you know I, I spend a lot more time stretching. I never used to stretch. I still hate stretching. I still don't like it, but I have to do it. Or else I'm, you know, I'll be back right back in the pain where I was. What are some signs of low testosterone? Well, okay. So as a younger person, uh, many people are not aware that there is an issue with young men and low testosterone levels. Uh, and my, the doctors who I've interviewed, uh, that are in the testosterone space tell me that they're seeing more and more men in their twenties showing up with Mm -hmm. lower baseline levels than men in their fifties and sixties. Just lower base levels. Yeah. Lower baseline levels than a man in their fifties and sixties. Uh, I, I can, I can tell you about three or four particular cases that I know of personally where, a uh, 23 and a 25 year old young man, young men. Now the, the lab range is, I think the depends on which lab company is about 960 is the high end and somewhere in the 200 is the low quote unquote normal, but normal is not healthy. Okay. Let's, let's get, mm. get, get that out of there. It's actually the average of normal the, is average, not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so okay. it's, it's it, because how they figure it is they, they average the males would take the testosterone test. And that's how they determine what the levels are, what the range is. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and the range is, yeah. is, the range is, there's a thing called the Massachusetts Male Normative Aging Study that documents, it's a very large and famous study that documents the generational decline of testosterone in men as they old, as they get older. Mm. And a man age 60 today has about 15 to 16% less testosterone than a man age 60 20 years ago. Okay, mm-hmm. but let's get back. Why let's, do you think that is? Well, because there's lots of stuff called uh, endocrine disrupting compounds. Oh, uh, that's one of the, and that's also the issue with testosterone in young men. Uh, these particular, uh, the two young men that I'm thinking about specifically right now, uh, one was at 125 and the other one was at 155. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. And so, you know, the, wow. the, si- the signs are being lethargic. Uh, lack of drive, lack of libido. I mean, when I was in my twenties, oh my gosh, I was, I was, I mean, I, I was a horn dog. I mean, I was just like, I was just, yeah, you know, I, I, I just wanted to have sex all the time. Uh, and young men just aren't doing that any they're as not, much. They're not anymore. doing that, and and so it's it's a real problem uh, for a whole bunch of people, uh, including young women, who kind of go like, where are the men? So when people are saying that yeah. that that uh, young men aren't as manly as they used to be, that's actually true. 
It's it's mm -hmm. physiologically true that, that that's occurring. And so it, it, it's a challenge uh, in many significant ways in terms of the development. You know, uh, the statistics now are, you know, uh, depression, porn, uh, you know, lack of drive. You know, there, there's fewer men in college than women. You know, when I was in dental school, 10% of my class was women. Now, mm -hmm. across the board, whether it's law school, medical school, dental school, chiropractor, whatever you want to call it, uh, more than half the class is women. It's, that's such an interesting thought because it seems like, I guess there's a paradigm that the with women dominating higher education and men being less manly, it's due to the feminism movement because men are just presenting what women want. But there's another side of that coin where physiologically men just aren't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. not what they're, they used to be. Well, I'm not poo-pooing the societal effects, you know, and, and like, you know, again, you know, I've been on a few calls here and there and like going like, this woman goes like, well, we need to train men. I go, what do you, train, what do you need to train men? And why are you the the, uh, the goddess of what a man should be? You're not. Yeah. You are not. And, uh, and uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's funny, you see, you see like a TikTok videos of the, of the woke woman who, who doesn't find any of her woke male friends to be attractive, but she she's wondering if it's okay to to date a conservative man. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Tell me your mission with your coaching program. Um, my I end up dealing with men who have been financially successful but have paid a price in their relationships with their wife, with their kids or, and or, uh, their health status. And mm. I have conversations with them that they would normally never have with anyone else. And they being the, the whole point of, of it is to get results. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm here to make you help you get results so you can feel good. You can make yourself feel good, but not me. And we start off with where you are and what you want. Most people cannot clearly articulate what they want with with specificity in in, in, some, in a way that is measurable. It has to be measurable. Yeah. And then we'd spend a lot of time going on mindset, uh, asking yourself the right questions. Uh, harnessing the power of pain and fear, uh, meditation, and then the, the last, uh, the last part of it is actually uh, relationships. It consists of uh, of a seven week on demand video program with exercises, and then one hour uh, coaching sessions with me for about twelve weeks. If that sounds like something you need, click the link below in the show notes. Thanks for listening.